Okay, guys, welcome back to another video from CXC Matutor. So in this video, we'll be looking at the New York State um, Common Core Regents Algebra 1, August 2018 past paper. I'm looking at questions 19 to 24. That's questions 19 to 24 on the New York State Common Core Regents Algebra 1, August 2018. All right, so... Um, question 19, so the functions f of x and g of x are graphed below, all right? So we have f of x and g of x. And the question asks, based on the, the graph, the solutions to the, the equation f of x equals g of x are, okay, so now whenever you're given um, a graph, Right, uh, like of two functions, for example, f of x and g of x. Um, the solution for those two functions is where f of x is equal to g of x. Right, in other words, where the two functions intersect, and the solution is always x value of that intersection point. So, remember, the intersection point is actually a point that has two coordinates, has an x coordinate and a y coordinate the x coordinate and the y coordinate, all right? So the solution is always the x value of the, the point, all right? The x value of the point. So let's look at other choices here. We can see for question 19, it will be choice three, the x values of the points of intersection, okay? So the answer is choice three. Okay, let's move on to question number 20. All right. So for the sequence negative 27, negative 2, 3, and 18, the expression that defines the nth term where a sub 1 is equal to negative 27 is. Okay, so let's check and see what kind of sequence is this, um, if it's an arithmetic sequence or a geometric sequence and so forth. All right. So I'm going to take the this term here and subtract the term previous. All right, so I'll take negative 12 and I minus negative 27. All right, it's gonna give me negative 12 plus 27, which is equal to positive 15, all right? So what I'm saying here is if I take negative 27 and I plus 15, all right, that's gonna give me negative 12. And if I take for example, this number here, subtract the number previous, three minus minus 12, so that's the same thing as three plus 12, which is gonna be 15. I get 15 here as well. And if I take 18 minus um, three, this is also 15 as well. So this 15 represents the common difference, the number that you keep adding to the previous term in order to get your next term in the sequence, all right? So this sequence here, because you keep adding the same number, the same constant to the previous term to get the next term, this is what they call an arithmetic sequence, okay? Arithmetic sequence. So this sequence here is called an arithmetic sequence. Okay? So whenever you, you keep, whenever you add or subtract the same number to the previous number, all right, to get the next number, then it's called an arithmetic sequence. All right, and a general formula for an arithmetic sequence is uh, t sub n, the nth term, is equal to the first term plus n minus one multiplied by the common difference, d. So a represents the first term in the sequence, which in this case is negative 27, to a sub one. All right, and the D represents your common difference. That's a number that you keep adding to the previous term in order to get your next term. So the nth term here is negative 27 plus N minus one multiplied by the common difference. All right, so if we distribute this and collect our like terms, so negative 27 plus 15 times N is 15 N and 15 times negative one is negative 15, all right? 
So if we were to simplify this, we have negative 27 and negative 15. So that's going to be 15n here. So negative 27 and negative 15. Using my calculator here, that's going to give me negative 42. All right. Or uh, if you want, you can, they did not simplify it in the, um, the answer choices here. All right. So you can see that um, choice four is a correct choice because it looks exactly like this, what I have here, as you can see. Okay. Negative 27 plus n minus 1 multiplied by 15. I could say negative 27 plus 15 multiplied by n minus 1. It's the same thing here. All right. So um, 15 multiplied by n minus 1 is the same thing as n minus 1 multiplied by 15. All right. That's my answer choice. Um, uh, choice four is the answer. Question number 20. Okay, so let's move on to question 21. The data obtained from a random sample of um, track athletes, athletes show that as a foot size of the athlete decreased, the average running speed decreased. Which statement is best supported by the, the data? So as you can see, that there's some correlation here. All right, as one decrease, the other one decrease. All right, so um, one, the smaller foot sizes cause track at least to run slower. Two, no. Um, this sample of track at least um, shows a, a causal uh, relationship between foot size and running size, uh, of running and running speed. Um, the sample of track at least shows a correlation between foot size and running speed. So that's your best choice there, okay? So there is a correlation between uh, foot size and uh, running speed, all right? So the answer for question 21 is choice three, all right? So let's move on to question 22. Okay, it says that which system of equations will heal the same solution as the system below? All right, so now here you have two um, linear equations in standard form, all right? Now, anytime you, if I, for example, have x minus y equal to three, and let's say I multiply this entire equation here by some constant, by any number at all. So let's say I multiply the entire equation by three, all right? All right, let's say this is a different number from this. Let's say four. It doesn't matter which number I use, but let's just use four, for example. So I'm going to multiply each term by four. So I have four times x is four x, and four times y, all right? Four times negative um, y is negative four y, and four times three is 12. So this equation here, this four x minus four y equal to 12, and the equation x minus y equal to three, are equivalent equation. That is basically the same equation, okay? The same equation of the um, line. So they, they will produce the same solution, all right? So as long as you multiply every term by the same number, the same constant, then the equations are equivalent, all right? So basically that's what you're looking for, um, to see uh, if there are any equations in the solution set here solution choices that is equivalent to this one and that's going to be an equation that is basically multiplied by a number all right so it could be one of the equations multiplied by a number or both of them multiplied by a number all right so as you can see that um question 22 the answer will be choice three um because what they simply did here with um as i can see that the second so let's say that this is the first equation and this is the second equation. As you can see that um, the second equation remains the same, exactly the same thing, 2x minus 3y is equal to negative one. But in the first equation, what they did, they multiply this first equation by two. 
All right, and that's why they get two times X is two X, two times negative Y is negative two Y, and two times three is six. All right, so this, fir this first equation here and this one here are equivalent equations, simply because they just multiply by a constant, a number. All right, so because they are, they are equivalent equations, they will produce the same solution, all right? Um, if you were to graph the two um, equations on a, on a graph paper, all right? They will give you the same x and y value for the intersections, all right, or the solutions, all right? So the answer is um, choice three for question 22. All right, let's move on. Question 24, uh, sorry, 23. Uh, which of the three situations given below is best modeled by an exponential function? Uh, a bacterial culture doubles in size um, every day. And that's definitely one, okay? Then anything that doubles, triples, and, uh, and so forth in size, that's, that's that, that, that the behavior of that function um, is an um, uh, exponential function, all right? Two, a plant grows by one inch every four days. So this is not an exponential function. You, you, the plant grows by one inch every four days. So it grows by the same amount every four days. So this is actually a linear function. This is more linear because it goes by a, a constant amount within the same, within the same um, time period. So every four days, one inch, all right? So the first four days is one inch. Then after eight days, it's two inches. After 12 days, it's three inches and so forth, all right? So it is a, this is, number two is a linear function, not exponential, all right? And the population of a town declines by 5% every three years, okay? So this is, Anything that's increased or decreased by a percentage that usually take the form of an exponential function, right? Um, so, the answer to a 23 will be choice four, all right? One and three, all right? The answer, question 23 is choice four, okay? All right, let's move on to question 24. So the length, width, and height of a rectangular box are represented by 2x, um, 3x plus 1, and 3x minus 5, uh, and 5x minus 6, respectively. When the volume is expressed as a polynomial in standard form, um, what is the coefficient of the second term? So you have this um, rectangular box here, all right? And this rectangular box. Um, okay. And so now we have the, the length width. This is 2x. And this is um, 3x plus 1. And, and the height is 5x minus six, all right? Let me just write this bigger so that you guys can see that. That's the information that is given to us, all right? So we have two X, we have three X plus one, and here we have five X minus six. Now, if you want to find a volume of this um, rectangular box, you just simply take the, the length times the width um, times the height, all right? So three X plus one, multiply by 2x, multiply by 5x minus 6, okay? So, so basically what they want you to do here is to multiply this out, distribute this out, all right? And then look at the number in front of your second term. You, first of all, you're gonna write this in standard form. So you're, not, you're gonna write the, the, the highest power uh, and so forth, all right? So looking at this, the highest power is going to be um, to the third power, right? So we have x, x, and x here, three x's. x to the third power, then you have x to the second power, x to the first power, and x to the, um, the zero power, and so forth. 
which is a constant. All right, so uh, so let's first of all let's distribute this first. So we have um, let's take two x multiplied by three x. That's going to give us six x squared, and two x multiplied by one is going to give us two x. And then we're going to take this now and multiply by the five x minus six. All right, get distributing. So six x squared multiplied by five x. Six times five is thirty. All right, and x times x squared times x is um, x cubed, right? 6x multiplied by negative 6. 6 times negative 6 is negative 36. And this is now x squared. Right? Then I have 2x multiplied by 5x. That's going to give me 10x. And 2x multiplied by um, negative 6 is going to give us negative um, 12x. All right, so if we put this in standard form, we have um, 30x cubed. Standard form meaning you're going to put a higher, the, the term with the highest power first. All right, and then you have um, 36x squared. All right, and then you combine this, that's going to give you negative 2x, all right? So, um, so the question actually, when the volume is expressed as a polynomial in standard form, what's the coefficient of the second term? All right, so um, maybe I made a mistake here. Let's um, double check this, because I'm not see that the coefficient of the second term based on what I have here should be negative 36, but I'm not seeing that here, so maybe I make a mistake here. Let's double check this. All right, so 3x multiplied by 2x is 6x squared, and 2x multiplied by 1 is 2x. And then we have now um, 6x squared plus 2x multiplied by 5x minus 6. Then I have 6x squared multiplied by 5x. That's going to give me 6 times 5 is 30, x cubed. 6x squared multiplied by this um, is 6 times 6 is negative 36 and x square right? and then I have 10x and negative 12x negative Twelve x. All right, that seems correct. But let's see what happens if I, if, I, if I were to factor two out. That's fifteen. That's uh, eighteen, and that's one. Uh, let's just um, see something here. The length, width, and height of a rectangular box are represented by this: two x, three x plus one, and five x minus six, respectively. When the volume is expressed as a polynomial in standard form, what is the coefficient of the second term? Okay, let's try this again. Maybe I did something wrong here. So let's take um, 2x multiplied by 3x plus 1, all right? And multiply by 5x minus 6, all right? So this 2x multiplied by this, 2 times 3 is 6, and you have x squared, and this 2x times 1, the positive 2x. And that's going to get multiplied by 5x minus 6. All right. So I have 6x squared multiplied by 5x, and give us 30x cubed. Um, 6x squared multiplied by negative 6, that's going to give me negative um, 36 x square and then two times uh, two times um, five two x times five x is going to give me um, ten x square okay that's where I made a mistake here ten x square and two x multiplied by negative six is going to give me negative twelve x okay so when I combine these together I right, so get thirty x 
cube. And I combine this, it's going to give me negative 26x squared minus 12x. All right, so as you can see, the coefficient of my second, this is my second term here, and the coefficient of my second term is negative 26. All right? And so that's going to be choice three for that. So I see we have made a mistake. Okay. All right, so um, that's good. So the answer for question 24 is um, choice three. Okay? And the coefficient is, is basically the number in front of your variable there. You always take the sign, so it's negative 26. Okay, so that's it for this video. Um, please remember to like, share, subscribe, and to be notified of a future video, please click on the, uh, the notification button too as well. All right? Okay, so that's it for this video. Thanks again.